Uh, I was listening to the G Unit mixtape the other day it's called The Fifth Element, where they officially added Game as a member. This came out in 2004, I believe. And if you listen to that mixtape, it's like, yo, G Unit had the industry on smash. And I remember when Game was doing his documentary, he said, man, 50 got this game so soaked up, we could be bigger than NWA. You got Buck, the wild, crazy dude from the South. You got me from the West Coast. You got 50 from the East Coast. You got Dr. Dre with the production. You got Eminem with the with the mainstream white fan base. You got a juggernaut right here. So it helped me wonder, man. I'm like, G-Unit could have been bigger than NWA if you really looked at how the olive tree was, was, was getting soiled up. I mean... I mean, Get Rich or Die Trying was doing numbers, big numbers. Documentary was doing numbers. Then 50 on top of that was doing movies. Then he was doing video games. He was doing books. He was doing all this in two years. Two years, y'all. From 2003, when he dropped Get Rich or Die Trying to 2005. Think about how strong G Unit would have been if Game would have stayed. Then Game would have had Black Wall Street under the G Unit umbrella. Buck would have had Cashville Records out of the G Unit umbrella. Banks and Yayo, they probably would have been, you know, under 50. But then G, then 50 was expanding into the distribution. Then he was getting the MOP, Marv Deep, Spider Lope, 40 Glock, uh, Mace, I don't know why he picked Mace or Olivia for that matter. Mob D. What happened was 50 was excelling too fast for industry standards. Look at the stuff that Dr. Dre had to deal with just to finally touch that Billy. Look at how many shady deals and how many crooks that he had to deal with. And look at how he had to run to Jimmy to save the day. Eminem is in, in the same bracket as well. Eminem, while he had a successful run as his as running Shady, Shady is really not moving that needle like that. Even though he has a good eye for talent, as you can see with Chris Selda, but Eminem is still basically more so an artist artist he also wants to more so focus on the artistry than the business side 50 on the other hand was strictly business and he excelled both of them in a lane where it even probably scared Jimmy Iovine and Jimmy Iovine was looking at it like look this dude he's learning faster than I, 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 I imagine I gotta shut this down then you got the people coming in games here. Man, you don't need to be under 50 cent. You bigger than him. You could be the 50 cent of the West Coast. And you know 50 cent got that ego too. Like, you know, when you got game and 50 cent, you got two guys like that. They got big egos anyway, so you know it's going to clash. Because you know game ain't going to take orders like Lloyd Banks and Tony Ayo. But... Think about how big these two would have been. So you know the powers that be, just like they did with Jay-Z and Dane, they had to find a way to break that off. Because that was a powerful entity if Game would have stayed. Yeah, the disc records and all that stuff was fun and entertaining to listen to, but what did it really accomplish deep down the road? Both of these guys could have been eating good together. G Unit could have still been a strong entity today. But you know how when you get a lot of money, you got a lot of power, these guys are young, nobody got and you got ego. It's a whole lot of things involved with that, man. It's it's easy to look from the inside, but I mean from the outside in, but the inside you really don't know what's going on. You really don't know what's going on between these board meetings. You really don't know what's going on between these circles. It's a whole lot. Especially when these guys was getting money and blew up so quick. I'm talking in their mid-20s. 50 was getting 
five million just off touring. Touring with Master P. He was making millions before he even had a record deal. But he also knew how to maneuver. And that scared a lot of the industry. We even talked about that on the show with Lotto. Big shout out to Lotto. I ain't, see, I ain't heard from Lotto in a minute. But he told me, man, a lot of them dudes, they try to blackball 50 because he was smarter than a lot of them gave credit for. He learned a lot. He soaked the game up like a sponge and went further than they imagined. As soon as they figured they couldn't get a piece, I think what happened when that vitamin water deal came through, that's when they was like, yo, and we ain't getting a piece of that? We got to cut this dude's wings. I mean, all this is speculation, but it's just looking like, I'm just going by a timeline of events on how this correlates together. Because I, I believe that they really cut 50's wing the same way they tried to derail Master P's independence by giving cash money, all that money up front for their distribution deal. There's a lot of cutthroat, there's a lot of cutthroat in this game. And it's just sometimes it's a look too convenient. So that's my thoughts about that, man. I mean, you know, I'm just reflecting on G-Unit and their rise and fall and how if they would have stuck together, it would have been such a huge conglomerate, a huge entity right now. Just based off the trees that they could have been branching from that movement. So, let me know what you guys think. Could G-Unit have been bigger than N.W.A.? Let me know. Holla.